From everything I've heard and seen, the new Toyota Tacoma is shaping up to be great. I'm looking forward to driving it here soon, but my biggest fear came true, and I think it's time to talk. Last year, I made an overview on the third gen Tacoma and why you should or shouldn't pick that one up versus waiting. The main reason I was skeptical of the newest truck was that it was probably going to be much more expensive. This architecture dates back to 2005. It used a relatively simple design and this was going to adopt an all new architecture. So let's get it out of the way. The base price after destination is now $33,000. That is nearly five grand more than the old utility package Tacoma. But before I dive further into the price, I need to highlight what's new and what you're getting for that money. As much as I appreciated the old death-defying 2.7 liter iron block in line four, mix 160 horsepower and 4,000 pounds, and you're gonna have to challenge your depth perception before merging. I'm telling you this because I owned a Tacoma with that engine. So it was pretty easy to assume that that engine would be on its way out. In its place, on the base trim, you will have a 2.4 liter turbocharged inline four that is a detuned version of the engine you'll find on the higher specs. It makes much more torque and horsepower and even reintroduced a manual transmission to the base grade. This is the same six speed manual from last year's V6, though it has been supposedly tweaked for a better feel. It also comes with an anti-stall, which automatically feeds it a little bit of revs to help you get going. And every stick will come with automatic rev matching. The eight speed automatic from my experience with it is a great transmission too. Good response, smooth shifts. The aforementioned 2.4 liter turbo is based on Toyota's proven 2.5 liter. It comes with port and direct fuel injection, and the brand says that many of its components have been upgraded to endure more abuse from commercial use. I trust Toyota, so I'll let them prove themselves before I say anything else. In the Highlander, I found this power plant to provide great mid-range passing power, and I think it'll fit the Tacoma pretty well. It just also sounds like it came from an early 2000s Camry. The truck itself will be based on the TNGA F platform, which is the new architecture underpinning the Land Cruiser, the Tundra, and the upcoming 4Runner. I've heard good things regarding comfort and handling, but I need to test that out for myself. It also adds an optional power lift gate, and you can get it with little releases on the side. Of course, if you pay for it, which on the current Tacoma, some of the option groups that you select are like four or $5,000. So keep that in mind. Payload capacity has also gone up to 1,700 pounds on the hybrid versions, which in the past to achieve a number like that, you needed the lightest four cylinder truck. This electrified version is more about performance than fuel economy. It sandwiches a motor between the same 2.4 liter engine and eight speed auto, good for 326 horsepower and a diesel intimidating 465 pound feet of torque, which should make towing much easier though chassis limitations seem to constrain the rating to 6,500 pounds. Briefly, I'd like to thank the knowledgeable folks over at Royal South Toyota in Bloomington, Indiana for letting me stand next to this Tacoma and drive several others in the past. Check them out. That power plant is an option, but it comes standard in stuff like the TRD Pro. There's also the new Trail Hunter, and these come with copious amounts of upgrades. There's substantial suspension improvements. Not just underneath, but for the seats of the TRD Pro too. There's a new front sway bar disconnect, something you can opt for with the TRD off-road. Then there's a slight suspension lift. Molly panels come with tacos now, but the Trail Hunter gets them built onto the side of the bed. And the limited trim is much more serious this year as it comes with adaptive suspension and an exclusive automatic four-wheel drive system that will allow you to engage all of the wheels in a much wider variety of situations. There's plenty of flavors around for this year, and there's even a new pre-runner edition, which gives you a two-door, two-seat, and two-wheel drive configuration with a rear locker still. It's an entry-level off-roader with some swagger, though it's hard for me to even call it entry-level because it's $40,000. Let's remember, you do get more sophistication with the new truck. Things like standard proximity unlock and lock. With the old SR, you still had to stick the key into the door handle unless you opted for the convenience package. There's also standard rear discs. Step past the SR and you'll drop leaf springs for a more controlled coil setup. 
There's better seats, better infotainment, better active driving aids, and that's all nice. At the end of the day, it's still a mostly no frills truck with steel wheels and a durable bed, though I really hope that they bring back the utility package because for a lot of people, they don't need everything I just mentioned. And while I am ecstatic that Toyota kept the manual transmission for the TRD models, it's gonna cost you at least $43,000. With the automatic, you're over 44,000, and that is before any of the packages, which can be very expensive. Here, this truck has over $6,000 of the options. Expect to pay extra for things like leather, a sunroof, bigger screens, the power tailgate, a JBL sound system, full digital cluster, 360 view camera, and if you are wondering, you can still get a six foot bed with the double cab for $500 extra on some grades. Also, at least on the SR5, TRD Sport, and Off-Road, the price bump seems to be hovering a little above 3000 The new limited grade may be far more luxurious than the old one, but it also costs over $8,000 more. The TRD Pro and Trail Hunter get a long list of upgrades over the standard models, like that hybrid powertrain. But that's probably going to drag the price up of those two special tacos to a ballpark of $60,000 if you were to ask me. So, how much is too much? Currently, Toyota's not making a huge effort towards a value proposition. Instead, they're taking the Grizzly Bear Survival Guide to heart. As long as you're not slower than the other guy, you're safe. Or, as long as it undercuts a full sizer by just enough money, the Tacoma should not have its sails devoured by many of the bigger trucks. A Tundra with the double cab, which offers an okay back seat and presumably worse gas mileage, but a much larger towing capacity, bigger bed, and more power, costs $8,000 more than an SR5 four-wheel drive double cab Tacoma. You may say just go with the bigger truck, but no matter what way you put it, that is a substantial difference. And unless you're going with a work truck grade F-150 or a Ram Classic, the Tundra's price is on par with the segment. Considering that and all of the positive things I'm hearing, I don't think the new Tacoma is overpriced. However, it does carry a high price relative to previous generations. The old model was a great option for businesses looking for an affordable, reliable, and practical vehicle. It's been a staple in the off-road community too, so it's nice that this didn't get more bloated. An attribute that is also important to the people who want a truck but don't need the extra capability of a full size. Still, I am concerned because a lot of folks shopping for a mid-sized truck are doing so because they are more realistic with what their needs are, and they like to save money instead of buying into to overkill. The people that are in love with the Tacoma will buy it anyway, but I also think this was a big enough jump to push it out of the budget for many or make others reconsider. Compared to mid-sized trucks, it's priced similar to the Ranger, but a Chevy Colorado with more power, torque, and towing capacity will undercut the Taco by a couple of grand, though the Chevy and Ford don't offer any different bed or cab sizes, and they can't match the Toyota's reputation for longevity. The Frontier is cheaper and even offers a crew cab long bed configuration, but the Toyota has a wider variety of features. I think the new truck should justify the money factor. And if what I've heard is true, I don't go bankrupt or something else doesn't catch my eye, I'll probably end up buying one after the first model year. So to answer my original question of how much is too much, to me the new Tacoma hasn't gone over the line, but it's pretty damn close. Let me know what you guys think. Are you willing to pay that much if the truck is that good? Or is the taco too deep in the water at this point? Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like to help me take on the elusive YouTube algorithm. Subscribe and hit the notification bell for more fun, detailed car content without fluff. Check out my Patreon for an additional podcast, and I'll catch you in the next one.